Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk. Today, I'm going to share with you our work around ERISnet, which is a service infrastructure and protocol to support develop distributed business application more efficiently. Please allow me to introduce myself first. My name is Harriet, and before I started my startup, Bianjie AI in Shanghai in 2016, um, I have always been working on data-heavy, analytics-driven enterprise systems, which in my opinion is one of the most challenging business application. And so that's why actually in 2016, very much inspired by the vision of Ethereum to build a world computing. So I feel like it is going to be a really cool thing to use a blockchain to enable the business application and be able to use the blockchain as a trust machine and allow the collaboration more efficiently. So that's what we have been focusing on since 2016. Um, and uh, last year, so we have been working on trying to build a healthcare data anal analytics and exchange platform with our collaborators. And it was uh, um, very interesting work. And, uh, um, but of course, as many of you start to okay. use the blockchain to do the real world business application, you might notice it is really not mature yet. So that's what motivated us, starting from the late last year, while trying to build on the experience, the lessons we learned, the good practices, and uh, trying to build a layer which will enable like, people to build the applications like what we did for Bing and be able to be more efficient. Like, by the way, Bing is the application we built for the healthcare data, which is we call like blockchain edge analytics network. And the ERISnet, uh, which is a joint effort uh, with Cosmos, oh, One Xiang One Cloud, and the BNG AI. So to summarize, like what is ERISnet? ERISnet, we are trying to build is kind of like a middleware layer, and it's built on top of uh, Cosmos. So I don't know like how much like in the audience you know about uh, Cosmos. Could you raise your hand? Okay, very nice. Yeah, and uh, so in the Cosmos, what we're building is uh, service-oriented infrastructure and uh, trying to allow people to develop business applications, distributed business applications, just like what they have been doing before. So we gave them the service interface, and uh, so using that interface, they can connect heterogeneous systems, and including both public chain, consortium chain, as well as legacy systems. And one cool really thing we have been doing is uh, we also provide the interoperability of those services across an internet of blockchains, which means to enable you to invoke the data service and the more complicated business uh, computations through, <coughs> through the, uh, across the blockchain network. So I'm not going to elaborate too much on these charts because even like yesterday, I've been hearing great talks uh, about like the current status of how the blockchain is going to support the real world business applications, including the talk from Ontology yesterday and also the great talk like just now like um, from the Sender network. Um, so we all know like for the blockchain, the public chain, so today it's performance and uh, it's not sufficient. And the governance also is not quite so suitable for all the business applications. And for the consortium chains, and of course, trying to uh, implement business logic all on chain is not really, uh, um, is not really all feasible. And uh, without the token economics, it's really lacking the uh, vitality. So the idea and also the architecture um, sort of angle, like from Arisnet, what we are doing is uh, we think like um, don't reinvent the wheel. So uh, we should just try to leverage the best things which coming from the different components. And uh, what we think like for the blockchain, actually, I think this idea might already be accepted by most people who has, who has been practiced uh, blockchain application development nowadays. But early last year, we, we really got the idea like um, blockchain, we should just use it as a trust machine. And actually, a lot of business logics, it is not possible and also it's not necessary to really 
trying to get them on blockchain, on chain. So um, blockchain part, we just focus on the consensus part. And also another very important aspect is the inter-blockchain communication, which is also very important, which I will explain a little bit later. And then uh, from the ErisNet, what we're trying to do is really more focus on providing the middle, middle layer to enable your connect, to connect the existing resource and the systems we have been developing so for so many years, and also with the developer skills we have all been having, and uh, to connect those legacy systems, and also enable to connect like the blockchain, public chains and the consortium chains, because they all have their good features. And uh, the one cool thing actually I also mentioned earlier, and I think it's also very important for the blockchain to make really a uh, real impact to the real world is uh, um, we, can, we should extend beyond just a crypto application and uh, transfer not only tokens, but also provide transparent and be able to securely provide a trustworthy uh, invocation over the data, over the computation. So let me like dive deep into a little bit what we think the underlying blockchain foundation is suitable for a business application. So here, like uh, I think many of us probably all familiar with the notion of the blockchain 1.0, which is represented by the uh, Bitcoin, and then of course Ethereum, which, uh, which represents the blockchain 2.0. And for the blockchain 3.0, and the people is trying to solve the performance issue, which is in the blockchain 2.0. And there are many good projects that are tackling the, this problem from the different angle. So here, I will just spend a little bit more time on the foundation we are building upon, which is Cosmos and the Tendermint. And uh, so for those of you who already know Cosmos, you probably know like the underlying it is using a, a consensus engine called Tendermint, which is a POS consensus engine. And uh, um, so it's like the really nice thing we know, we really like about Tendermint. That is why like last year, when we evaluated so many public chain uh, consensus engines, including like Griffin and, uh, and all these things, we found like Tendermint is the one really works for us to build the business applications. The nice thing we like about Tendermint is it provides a very nice separation of the consensus part and also the application level. And for all the software engineering people, like we all like this type of componentized architecture. So you can focus on to really solve the challenge through a divide and conquer manner. And Cosmos is based on the Tendermint use the consensus engine. And as you see, like Tendermint be able to separate the application level logic from the consensus engine part. So the Cosmos part is actually built on the Cosmos SDK. It provides the inter-blockchain communication and allows this uh, um, inter-blockchain transactions be handled in a secure way. And uh, so this type of fundamental blockchain architecture, we found it is very suitable for building the complicated business applications we have in mind, especially the Cosmos taking a very open architecture. So for those like you, uh, you read the white paper and also follow the testnet development these days. So you know like Cosmos architecture, um, it has a notion called a hub and the hub is a blockchain itself, and it only focuses on the application logic to handle the inter-blockchain communication transactions. And every other blockchain in the ecosystem by itself is an independent blockchain. And so they can have their own governance, and they, um, and they, are, they will go in through the uh, inter-chain communication through the hub. And uh, in the in the Cosmos ecosystem, it supports multi-chain and also multiple hub. And through even this multi-hub architecture, it will enable great scalability as well as the security. And the Iris hub is positioned as the two um, levels in this uh, you know, Cosmos ecosystem. So one thing is, it is an uh, inter-blockchain hub. So it serves as the regional hub is going to connect with the Cosmos hub when we are 
actually, we are currently working on launching the Cosmos main hub, which is quite exciting. And uh, I would encourage you, everyone to follow our um, progress. And so Iris Hub is going to be the first um, regional hub. And the Iris Hub also will focus more on the distributed applications, while Cosmos Hub has been working very hard these days, Cosmos team, trying to connect with Ethereum and also to uh, work together with Omicigo team and focus on the digital asset exchange. And uh, for the Iris Hub, like uh, this type of multi-hub architecture, the nice thing is every application um, those are the few partners we have been working very closely with, and uh, they are really very good, really nice, great distributed business applications, and we found great excitement and uh, the technology challenges posed from the different business scenarios. So we have been working very closely with them to even help them on their blockchain design. For example, the HashGuard focus on the um, crypto uh, asset management, and uh, also like the DBA, which is di distributed business application, and and also, like uh, I think, like you uh, network and the MediShares, they all they all have the booths in this conference. So I would encourage you to visit them. And by the way, I also brought in a few Aris T-shirts and the bags, and uh, I put them in the MediShare and the U uh, U networks booth. So you're welcome to take it, to take them. And the idea, like for this multi-hub structure, is every zone has their application logic, and the hub will take care of the secure inter-blockchain communication. And uh, all the application itself, they can actually manage and develop their application-specific logic and implement their governance. And I feel like that is a, a more feasible and natural way to represent the complicated real world. Um, that is how the real world is works. So here, like, um, a little bit deeper on the, on the thing like I mentioned earlier. So the Aries Hub, actually, um, we built this Aries service layer using the Cosmos SDK with the extension to the IBC. And uh, um, we provide the service constructs. If you're familiar with SOA, then you would know like service definition, service invocation, and service governance and those things. So that is the things we are already developing uh, using the in the Cosmos SDK, and so to provide the developers a higher level abstraction when they are developing their application. I know like um, I'm a little bit running out of time, so I will just uh, uh, go summarize on this, like the core technology we've been using, the fundamental part, the consensus, and in the blockchain communication, the protocol, we are uh, based on the Cosmos Entertainment, and uh, in the Iris net, we are building this iService layer, as I mentioned earlier. And then another thing so we feel proud of, it's also thanks to the openness and the flexibility provided by the Cosmos IBC protocol, and we make the enhancement and extension to it to allow data computation be used and consumed across the blockchains. So here, like for the Aries part, and uh, we are also like even building the um, some system level services. For example, like we are already integrating with the IPFS, so we are providing a storage service for so for those application developers, and they can just directly using the um, storage service, and they don't need to worry about all the complications of the storage underlying. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, our collaborator, which is like hash guard and for them and uh, we have been discussed a lot on the business requirements and then uh, another data service which is uh, some of the work we are also going to develop to to the ecosystem is for some for example the market data services and uh, to use this way to allow everyone to build the application to reuse a lot of existing work So this iService layer is really like a wrapper, and you can use that wrap around the legacy systems. And you can expose SS service through the, a very simple service definition. And once it is uh, published and uh, uh, binding to the blockchain, and so it can provide a trustworthy way for the other parties to invoke it. Uh, I don't. I don't want to uh, drive very deep into how we are enabling the cross blockchain um, service invocation. So you are welcome to check to to check our check out our web page, and we have pretty deep illustration how we are implementing that. 
So this is one of the use cases we have been examining and uh, testing. That is more on the uh, healthcare data part. And uh, that one we have been collaborating with Beijing University Medical School, as well as Ningxia, with a big, big province in China. And uh, so we actually build the, what we call edge server, and that edge connect to the hospital and get the data exposed as a data service. And also uh, provide analytics service. And that's also a cool thing. We actually have the analytics service be able to even um, move to the data side and to, to protect the data privacy. Some other use cases. Yeah, since my own background has been working on like analytics, big data analytics for so many years, so uh, these days when I see a lot of projects um, is trying to do blockchain plus AI, and I think like if we can get this middle layer um, constructs ready, and then that basically can allow like everyone be able to develop these type of uh, applications in a faster way. So because essentially it's just an expose of data services as well as analytics service. I want to give some credit to our great partners. And uh, in this collaboration, and the Cosmos and the Tenement team, so we have been working very closely, and uh, so especially on uh, every design, and uh, on the extension of IBC, and uh, uh, of course the improvement and upgrade of the Tenement consensus engine. And one cloud and the new chain base, that is uh, all the subsidiary of Wanxiang blockchain group, which is uh, one of the biggest conglomerate um, on the blockchain field in China. And by the way, they are also starting a, a great conference in September called the Block, uh, Global Blockchain Conf uh, Summit. In, in September. Both uh, Cosmos and ArisNet were sponsors to that conference, and uh, this, sub, this, gen, this uh, July and August, we are going to make a lot of uh, progresses, and uh, we are also quite looking forward to announce those uh, uh, progresses in September. So if you get a chance to visit Shanghai, so please welcome to join us in that conference also. Some progress so far, and uh, so so far, like we have already been um, putting our test net up, and uh, um, we are also targeting very hard to get our mainnet hub uh, mainnet working in August. And right now, like in July, uh, I think everyone in the team, um, I mean like the collaborative team, we are all looking very much to Cosmos mainnet launch. And so if uh, you are in this, yeah, you are interested in the Cosmos progress, I would encourage you to monitor this great, um, this uh, great like progress. So we are trying very hard in the July to get the mainnet hub uh, launch, and then August uh, the the Iris hub launch, and then within this year the Iris uh, uh, SDK, and we want to get the first version ready, and so um, for the other application developers can also use that. So I think that is pretty much conclude my talk, and. Uh, um, since I'm already running out of the time, but I will stay in the conference. Uh, and so you are, so you're welcome trying to find me if you have questions. I'm really looking forward to some in-depth discussion. And there are a few of my, um, a few way like to, uh, to connect with NAS. And uh, of course, I'm also very much looking forward to the exploration of collaboration. Thanks everyone.